Indeed, a wonderful morning here, the nice day, day 28th in the month of uh, May 2018 here. Yesterday was for the kids, they got a wonderful Children's Day. Uh, tomorrow, for the politicians and the political class, uh, maybe the nation at last anyway, we'll be talking democracy. And at the middle lies today, the 28th day in the month of May, in the year of our Lord 2018. It's not time for us to look at uh, what it takes to be on the ground. Uh, ascend the sky, uh, remain in the sky, and later on, uh, land at expected destination. It's time to talk aviation with aviation freak, Mr. Uh, Godi N. E. K. He's been around on the program over and over again and again, and oftentimes he wants to guide us so that we don't just act as novice, uh, this kind of, uh, kind of passenger, agbero driver type of thing, where you enter into the car, you fold your hands, not knowing what is going on around you, just praying and hoping that divinely you arrive on the other side, you come down, say your prayers, and but you must be part of the process, understanding how the aviation sector and industry works. Is here with me. A wonderful morning, sir. Hi, good morning. Very good morning, sir. How was your weekend? Oh, thank God, weekend was fine. Wonderful. I was not kids here. The kids uh, enjoyed their weekend. Yes. As parents, we we'll spent. <laughs> yes, I had a wonderful <laughs> weekend also, as usual. Okay, yeah. I, I, I know for sure Mr. Godike is set uh, for Democracy Day tomorrow here. Yeah. But quickly, let, let's let's get uh, started. Okay, that's the detail of Mr. Uh, uh, Godwin and E.K. Somehow, Godwin, Godi, you know for sure, we love this, abri this uh, 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 abbreviation spirit there. The E.K. got a long meaning all together. The Godi got Godwin uh, there. The N there don't stand as just an alphabet. All our names sometimes are largely abbreviated. But you just know that this is one man who loves aviation so much, uh, who is very passionate about the aviation sector, that even key stakeholders are beginning to say, hey, wait, you are one of us. You are deeply involved in this, and those are his uh, contacts here. Now, let's look at uh, our, spiral, our, our cockpit rule here. Why, cockpit rule, why do we need to have all of this? Very important. As a matter of fact, Atta, <coughs> excuse me, this is a phase of flight that guarantees that you stay alive or die. Okay. As you are approaching, doing your final approach for landing, every concentration is required. You, you've got to do everything right. Otherwise, you may not touch down. You may end up controlling the airplane into the terrain and crashing you know, into shrubs and trees. and Whenever you make contact with any object, the likelihood is that fire will erupt and consume everyone. And so the, the sterile cockpit rule uh, came about um, many, many years ago, when, uh, uh, precisely in 1981, when uh, the, uh, the American authorities uh, realized that some, most of the crashes that they experienced within that period, you know, were as a result of pilots uh, constituting themselves into chatterboxes in the in the in the cockpit. Gossips. You, at a time that you should be concerned with making sure that that airplane is maintaining the glide and that you you are maintaining the appropriate you know speed for you know for landing and heading out to touch down nicely on, on, the, on the threshold. The two gentlemen, or maybe a man and a lady, or two ladies, as the case may be, are busy discussing used car business. Are, are busy talking about the, 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 you know, the, the escapades in the, in, the, in the last hotel that they, they were before, before that flight. You know, you know talking us, discussing all sorts of uh, non-pertinent um, you know, uh, issues. And in the process, lose what is known as situational awareness. Correct. And as soon as you lose your situational you awareness, you don't even know you your, your, your altitude. You don't, you don't even know whether you are going forward or backward. You, uh, as a matter of fact, you just by, you are living by grace. You are living by, by grace. grace. <laughs> and, and before you know it, crash. the plane gets controlled into the terrain, and you crash. Rather than touch down on the wrong way, you touch down short of the wrong way, or sometimes overshoot overshoot the wrong way. But, but before, uh, before, before you go ahead uh, yes. on tonight, cockpit here. The yes. issue is that 
Don't you think somehow it is this issue of overconfidence here? Yeah, a man has been flying a plane and the man just feel, look, I can just, I can, like, like, that's the word we use now, I yes. can just, mm. I can talk mm. uh, uh, with my past experience. I can easily touch down successfully. Very well. Uh, uh, one gets tempted to behave that way, um, but you must realize that you have innocent lives in, in, in the airplane, and those lives are handed over to you on trust, that you've been well trained, you've been taught how to do this job and do it well, and then suddenly you leave the rules and begin to do your own thing your own way. Very often, things go wrong, and when they go wrong, you know, human beings are slaughtered, and unnecessarily too, painfully, you know, too. And so, um, the, the, the cockpit, uh, or rather, the sterile cockpit rule is simply, you know, saying to pilots, during this phase of flight, during your flight... These fight, are the rules you must obey. That's correct, and it, it, in a nutshell, is saying to pilots, shut up discuss only issues concerning that approach and the need to touch down safely. That's all you must discuss within those final moments. And that's the, you know, the sterile cockpit rule for you. Now, if, you, if we begin now to uh, take our clips, then you we'll see, we want to trace, um, we want to trace the uh, what used to be, you know, uh, when pilots were really, really busy in the cockpit, when they had no time to engage in frivol uh, frivolities, and um, uh, you know, uh, those were the early days of aviation when when uh, you had very seriously. not just taking business very seriously, you were forced to do so because of the the circumstance at the time. You you will see as you read through the clips. Okay, let's that, let's, let's um, go on quickly. You know, technology made things so easy, that, you know, that, you know, pilots now found time to leisure in the cockpit. It wasn't so before the, 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 okay. the uh, before technology Let's came. So clip one, please. Clip one. That's clip one. The red cockpit. Yes. Here, here we go, Atta. 37 uh, years ago, uh, precisely in 1981, the USA Federal Aviation Administration, fondly known as FAA, after reviewing a series of accidents caused by flight crews distracted from their flying duties by engaging in non-essential conversations and activities during critical parts of the flight, recommended and implemented the sterile copy rule. This requires pilots to stay away from engaging in non-essential activities in the cockpit during critical phases of flight, usually at altitudes below 10,000 feet. Now, as you're approaching, and as soon as you hit 9,000 plus, the sterile cockpit rule, you know, kicks in. At that point, no more charting, no more pleasantries, no more jokes, absolutely nothing other than the job. The job. The job. All right. So the, the man flying holds his joystick, takes a look occasionally at his uh, you know, PFD, that's the primary flight display, or looking through the windshield to, to, to locate and be sure that he's aligned with the runway. And his assistant, remember I've, I told you, the airplane can be flown from either side, from either the, the side of the captain or the side of, um, uh, of the first officer, his co-pilot, because everything is synchronized. If you move your joystick forward, that of the co-pilot moves you know, in the same you know, fashion forward. You pull it back, the other one pulls back without any human being touching it. It's, it's all, everything is synchronized. The pedals are synchronized. The, the joystick is synchronized. So you can, you can fly from either side. And so if one is flying, the other is making calls, especially when you're not doing your final approach, when you need to be sure that you're flowing the, the glide slope and and that you're not, uh, you know, uh, flying above it or flying beneath no. it. The consequence of flying above your, uh, um, your glide slope is that you're going to overshoot 
the, the threshold of the runway, maybe touch down at the middle of the runway, and you're not going to have enough room to stop the airplane before the end of the runway. Now, if you're falling below the, the glide slope, the likelihood is that you're going to touch down before the threshold. And that's, more, that's disastrous. And, and that's disastrous. Just, uh, 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 set you down the shrubs. That's correct. So that's, you know, so, so you, you must maintain the glide. Because that glide has been programmed to terminate you on, on the threshold of the runway. And your co-pilot who is taking a look and making sure you're, you're maintaining the required speed, if, if at the time you're coming, depending on the size of plane and the, the weight you know, you're coming in with, you, know, you, the, you may be asked to maintain 150 knots. Sometimes you may be asked to maintain 160 knots. And of course, you must keep that in place. Somebody is going to be looking at the speedometer for you to make sure that that speed is kept. If, if it's falling below, he announces to you and you add a little, a little power. That's what happens when you are coming to land. I, I don't know if you have noticed, sometimes you, feel you like hear the you, engine. You feel like your, your, your intestine is dropping. Not just only that. <laughs> That's you, how I feel. You, 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 you hear the humming of the engine. Mm -hmm. Comes, comes down. But that, what yeah, I feel, that, that, is, is my is my body system here. Yeah, I'm coming yeah. down. You have to quickly. The, uh, <laughs> what's going on? At, what's going on at that point uh, is as soon as your speed is falling below the required you know speed, you know everything is calculated based on the the weather situation. Whether you have a headwind that that you are coming up against or whether you have a tailwind that is pushing you from behind, you know, or you have a crosswind. I mean, you, you, everything is programmed. And then, of course, you are, the control tower tells you what the situation is and gives you the, the speed you must maintain because they have all your data. You, by the way, remember, before you take off, you, fly, you file in your flight plan. And your flight plan has everything, including the weight you are, you are coming in with. And everything. So you must keep that in, you know, to make a successful landing. Just imagine having so much to take care of. And at that point, I am saying to Ata, Ata, oh, oh, oh boy, that, uh, that, night, uh, that night we will come drink reach 2 o'clock now, wow. And, 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 you know, we start chatting, talking, now, talking all kinds of body toys. Uh, ah, you know, you know, uh, Real Madrid defeated Liverpool. And you are carrying <laughs> lives. Lives. <laughs> so, uh, Stereo Copy Rule is saying, once you fall below 10,000 feet, shut up. Just shut up, face the flying, and discuss only that landing. Now, let's go to clip two, please. I hope I, yeah, yes, we, we, we finished with. Um, That's clip two here. Yeah. Some uh, accident that le led to the recommendation and implementation of the rule. That's correct. So, um, aircraft accidents known to have been caused by lack of altitude and situation. Um, uh, uh, excuse me, please. Aircraft accidents That's known to have been caused by awareness. lack of altitude and situational awareness due to distraction from idle chatter among the them flight crew. Pilots. <laughs> 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 That's a little bit too harsh on the pilot. Yeah. Oh, no. Well, when the constitution says to chatter, ch <laughs> chatter boxes, no, well, anyway, it, uh, but idle chatter simply means you know con yeah. conversing, you know. On, so relax, uh, on relax, uh, last right, uh, <laughs> on unnecessary <laughs> things okay. for the moment, you know. So, uh, yeah. so uh, for Bible chatter among the flight crew during the approach phase of the flight include number one, the Eastern Airlines flight two one two. Remember, we dealt we dealt with that last last week. Yes, uh, crashed short of the runway at Charlotte Douglas International Airport in 1974. During an instrument approach in thick fog, remember, remember the, the crew, uh, even though they were doing uh, an instrument approach, were busy discussing used car business. The Kumba vehicles. <laughs> the Kumba vehicles. And, and then, and then, you know, uh, talking about you know all sorts. And then, what, what what amazed investigators was that they were busy looking out for the tower. You, you remember the, uh, in, in, in a very foggy environment. 
in the, in the very foggy environment. Apparently, they've been using that you know tower as uh, because the height is you know is known, and then um, the the world will always use it. as soon as they saw it and they, they, they align themselves with the level of the tower. They say, okay, yeah, this that. is where we are. They're using uh, common, common sense. That's common, I, common, common sense. They're uh, using instrument. They're using common sense. And, and no, the the, the co-pilot was actually the one flying in this particular Eastern airline, and his captain was not giving him the course to let him know uh, the, how he was dropping in, in altitude and was not even you know, taking a look at his uh, speed. And they were just busy discussing the big, the big business of uh, uh, used cars and then, and then gliding down, not taking a look at the glide slope, you know, the onboard glide slope. It was crazy, crazy at her, how those uh, you know, uh, two pilots would run you know, so recklessly. And at the end of the day, they crashed three kilometers before the runway and slaughtered everybody in that flight. And so that was um, the, the Eastern Airlines Flight 212. Now, number two is the uh, Kogan Air Flight 3407 uh, uh, in 2009. Crashed into a house on February 12, 2009 due to crew's violation of rules, banning non-essential conversation during instrument final approach. The plane crashed because the crew evidently lacked situational awareness and therefore did not respond appropriately to stall warnings. In this particular case, the plane was coming in at very low speed and uh, the stick shaker, which, which, which is one of the um, uh, stall warning in, in airplanes. You have, you, you have different ways that this, you know, I told you the airplanes are very faithful. Machines. Very faithful machines. Unfortunately, human operators are usually unfaithful and dishonest, and that's why they fall off the skies. I mean, when, when you're running too low, and um, stall warnings be, uh, uh, begin, you, you notice that uh, it will give you some chimes, sometimes voice acting later, we talk to you, uh, you know, and begin to announce to you terrain, terrain, you know, so telling you that you are heading towards the terrain, the, you, are, you know, uh, and, the, and your speed. And then this, the one they call stick shaker, you find your, your joystick begin to vibrate, you know, ways that this faithful machine will inform a trained pilot or trained pilots that all is not well, they, all, all, all is not well and that your speed is too slow and that you're about to stall. And you know what? The phenomenon is, uh, is amazing. As soon as you stall and you begin to experience vertical drop of the sky, at all, no matter how much power you put, that plane stops flying. It's amazing. Get, get me the uh, miniature. Let me, let me show you what I mean. I mean, you are, you are in this way, you know, tearing away and, and, and heading for, for, for your landing, and then your speed is so, you know, so low that your stick, you know, checkers and, uh, and other things begin to happen, and you do nothing to, in, to first of all, uh, get your pitch, you know, in, in a proper uh, position and add power to increase your speed. As soon as that shaking and signs get to this, dropping vertically, no matter how much power you put, this plane stops flying. But, 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 but what, what can you do in this circumstance? Can you? It's only if you have height advantage. If you, are, if, if you run into a stall while you are, say, about 30,000 feet above sea level, and then maybe some icing, you know, uh, kept your elevators in a negative uh, position, uh, thereby giving you a high angle of attack, what is known as a high angle of attack. That slows your airspeed, even when you are you know, 30,000 feet above the sea level. If that happens to you, for instance, the, the plane begins to give you, you know, signals that it's about to stall. What you must do at that time is, if, if, it's, if it's icing issue that you have, maybe you turned off your heater that is supposed to be de-icing the, all the movable parts of the airplane. Sometimes pilots turn them off in order to save power and then forget. And this is build up ice. If that happens, you must quickly put on your, um, heater. your heater to release those uh, you know, elevators and your, and, the, and your aerons that are probably stuck you know, in, in a position by, by ice. 
and then you push on your on, on your joystick, take a dive, gain speed, pull up, and then begin again to 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 swirl back into the sky. That is the only chance you have to fly away from a but storm. Have height. But if if you don't have um, height. Um, <laughs> if you don't have a height um, advantage. advantage, you are doomed. As soon as the vertical drop begins, but, 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 uh, you are doomed. You must crash. Uh, no matter how much power you put, the plane stops flying. As our time flies, which is flying very quickly. Now, yes. we have many more clips. No, just two more clips, and okay. we're done. Let's switch clips. Okay. So, Kogan Air. Uh, uh, crash into the house. Uh, okay, we've we've talked about it, uh, and therefore did not respond appropriately to storm warnings. We've dealt with that. Let's get to clip three, please. Clip three. Yes, how the uh, solar cockpit rule evolved. Uh, Non-essential activities in the cockpit were virtually impossible in the early days of aviation. Listen to this; very important. It's a history of uh, how we came to where we are today. In those days. Engine noise drowned out normal conversations in the cockpit. <laughs> Even in the early uh, days of instrument flying, uh, the efforts involved in flying the beam. Okay. Even in the early days when instrument flying, I have just told you about the, the, the days when engine noise will not allow you to even you know hear anything what more you know uh, have time to be chatting with your colleague but then again uh, as soon as instrument fl uh, uh, flying was introduced to aviation we had yet another challenge we had this uh, uh, flying flying the beam which i have translated for my viewers uh, here uh, navigating a course determined by the intersection of ground-based radio signals by straining to listen through a headset to an audio system of dates and dials. Now, in those days, you know how they navigated? Radio stations were set in various locations, you know, where you have the, the, uh, those intersections. And uh, pilots had their, their head, headgear through which they listen to signals coming from those radios. You know how they know when to turn left? When they hear, did, did, da, did, da, did, da, that means you need to turn left. If you hear, da, di, da, di, da, di, that means you need to. Uh, that, 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 that can be very terrible. Terrible. Any pilots didn't have fun at all. It was, it was really harsh business, harsh job to do. Because you, you need to have all your attention. That's why they didn't have the problem of, uh, of uh, you know, ch uh, being chatterboxes you know, when they are coming into land. Because you must train your ears to be sure you're hearing the right thing. Dida, uh, dida, dida. Then it means you need to be turning left. Daddy, daddy, daddy. It means you're, you, you're, you're supposed to be turning right. Then when it gives you a constant D, 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 that means you, you must keep. Uh, so flying they, straight on. That's how they navigated in those days. Now, so they don't, they don't, <laughs> all right, all right, okay. So um, uh, we stopped at uh, the DIDA. Then forced pilots to concentrate. Uh, what, what, what we're saying is that uh, by this, you know, this situation, straining to listen through a headset to an audio, in you know, a stream of dates and darts, forced pilots to concentrate on flying duties during instrument meteorological conditions. So that situation forced pilots to really concentrate because you need to hear well, make sure you are hearing D or DA, you know. So as aviation technology evolved to jet age in the 1960s, comfort and low sound levels beca uh, became more conducive to distractions. So. Jet age gave us comfort, gave us fun, but created a new problem for us. <laughs> so that's this okay, distraction. That's that's so clip four, the last clip. Um, we are continuing with how sterile copy rule evolved. The jet age was complemented with the development of autopilots, availability of in-flight mirrors, multi-person flight and cabin crew, newspapers and in-flight movies. All these conspired 
to make available non-flight related activities for flight crew during flight time. The introduction of the cockpit voice recorder played an important role in the identification of the problems associated with uh, uh, crew engaging in excessive non-pertinent conversations during critical phase of the flight. The Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, eventually decided to implement the sterile cockpit rule. So we've just seen the history of the sterile cockpit rule. So as we come in next week, we'll be looking at what the rule says, what the rule says, and then um, uh, look at what pilots are expected to do and how they should do them. You know, that will be our part two, you know, uh, next week. For this, um, Atta, I want to hear from you. Oh, oh, if there are oh, questions okay. to ask, if we look let's, at the, let's just, deal with it. Just very quickly before our next guest come on now. Yeah, that's right. What about the enforcement? What's the penalty very quickly? Ah. Uh -huh. That, that in part two. We'll deal with that in part two, but then let me tell you a little bit that, uh, you know, pilots, uh, especially in very serious, uh, you know, environments, they are, they are monitored and uh, just like having our own NCAA, usually when a plane touches down and, uh, uh, you know, it's uh, getting cleaned up for the next uh, round, round of the trip, um, uh, agents of uh, of government, such as uh, NCAA agents, should st you know step into the pilot, take a look at the log of the airplane, make sure that there are no th nothing you know being contravened, and if if possible, if possible, plug in, plug in and listen to uh, you know some of the things that went on uh, you know during that flight. It doesn't take more than five minutes to, to carry out all these checks and then ensure that the right things are done all the time. It doesn't take time to do. Okay, and uh, so, uh, um, thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Mm. I think that's how far we can go this morning. We yeah. thank you very much, uh, Aviation Africa, uh, Mr. Uh, Godwin N. Ike here, mm. telling us that when we do, mm. beside, even beside the issue of uh, the aviation sector, if you are doing other things like driving, there are times you just need to stop this uh, communication. We've seen uh, some reporters, like ourselves, uh, presenters from very uh, respected media houses, when they are about to go on air or when they sign on pro programs or packages, they engage in very petty talks here. Yeah, and when those talks filter out, obviously, it dents their image. Thanks for coming on the show. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very My much. Pleasure. My pleasure. Okay, we'll take a break very quickly. When we return uh, from the break, we'll be looking at uh, some democracy related issue you know by tomorrow we'll be celebrating democracy day we'll look at democracy related issue the program continues after this break <laughs>